you ever been out having a good time, whether it's with friends or family, or really whoever, just enjoying yourselves, all the company there is enjoying themselves, whether y'all having good food, good drinks, it's good energy, and whatever y'all doing, everybody is thoroughly enjoying it and loving it. The atmosphere is great. But then there's one friend that's there that's like, mm, I want to go home. I don't want to be here anymore. And they are just the extreme vibe killer. We've all been there before. Whether you've been the friends that are enjoying themselves or you've been that vibe killer. And I'm not going to ask which one you are. That's not important. But this is exactly what's going on right now. Because it's really seeming like everything is coming together like, oh, man, we, we got Odell Beckham Jr. And Baltimore Ravens putting up these cryptic tweets. And then Lamar, he goes and chimes in and we, we're hearing reports that, that there's players that really feel like Lamar is going to sign a long term deal with the Baltimore Ravens. And everything is just seeming to be flowing and coming together. And then all of a sudden this report comes out that the 49ers, the San Francisco 49ers. They checked in on trading for Lamar Jackson. And I'm just thinking like, man, take that somewhere else. We don't want to hear nothing about that right now. Don't be the vibe killer right now. We all chilling, enjoying ourselves, having a good time, getting ready to hopefully celebrate really, really soon over the next 24 hours and change. But then that came along now it didn't say when the report was from like when the 49ers exactly checked in on Lamar Jackson but this is one of the big reasons why we're hoping that this deal can just get done because once this deal is done once it's completed once it's finished finalized signed sealed and delivered once it's official we ain't got to worry about none of this stuff no more we ain't got to worry about the, oh, what it could be, what could have possibly happened, where he could possibly end up, where Lamar could possibly go, possibly get traded to. We ain't got to worry about that no more. But when you come to the realization of what it currently is right now, you still have to worry about that because nothing's officially official. And when you really think about that, since nothing is officially official, even if you take out the 49ers, because you never know what could happen, it can kill your vibe. It can ruin your whole mood about this whole thing. So hopefully the Ravens and Lamar Jackson can get this thing worked out uh, really, really soon. Thinking about the 49ers, um, they have been a really good team with some excellent coaching. Uh, their coaching really stands out when you think about their team because they are a team that has continued uh, to face injury after injury after injury after injury after injury. Um, but they have continued to be aggressive. They went out uh, and traded for Christian McCaffrey. And I remember when they made that trade, I was like, really? Him? Christian McCaffrey? But then when you think about it, it's like, oh, wait a minute. He is a, uh, he's a great fit there. Because the 49ers are like, they remind me of sort of a, a modernized Patriots team. Because the Patriots, uh, I remember when th th they were a team where it's like the more you can do. The more you can do. The more roles a player can have, the better. But the 49ers are like the upgraded version of that. Um, so they, they have players that can do so many different things. Obviously Debo. He, hey, he's a good wide receiver, but he's a wide receiver, running back, just... He's just a playmaker, straight up. Kyle Juszczyk. <laughs> oh, that, that was a tough one, man, because I remember really wanting the Ravens to keep him, but it's okay, it's all good. Uh, George Kittle, I mean, but th when you look at their team, they, again, they get it done. So with Christian McCaffrey, he's somebody that is a running back, but he's also a slot wide receiver. You put him at outside wide receiver. Too. You can move him around and use him to do so many different things. And the 49ers found success with it. But then another thing, too, when we talk about the injuries, Trey Lance out. Jimmy Garoppolo out. Brock Purdy in. And the 49ers, this is, see, when you face injuries, and again, there's only so much that a coaching staff can do when it comes to injuries. But when you face injuries, your coaching is put on front street big time. 
Because there's so much additional pressure that gets put on them. Because they really got to shine a lot. And the 49ers still did that. First starting quarterback, out. Second starting quarterback, out. They down to Mr. Irrelevant. The last pick of the draft. And he balled. He balled. Brock Purdy, he balled. You got to give credit to coaching for that. So I say all that to say this. Imagine, and I know we don't really want to, but imagine if Lamar Jackson was there. Filthy. If Lamar Jackson went there, I would say, hey, 49ers, they going back to the Super Bowl straight up. They are going back to the Super Bowl. And some people may be like, oh, man, that sounds crazy. No, 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 no. They went there with Jimmy Garoppolo. And they've been to all these NFC championships and whatnot. And then even like last year, they were battling with the Eagles, but then injuries happened and they just, they couldn't hang anymore. But if they got a Lamar Jackson, I would say for sure, I would, I would pick them in the NFC straight up. Like no questions asked. Like even without a Lamar Jackson, they are heavyweight in the NFC. But if you added him to that, it would be filthy. It would be disgusting. Both filthy and disgusting in good ways, obviously, but. It would be, whew, that would be something. But it's not looking like or, or seeming like it's, it's going to go down, which I, I don't have a problem with at all. But it does make sense. When, when you think about it, it really does make sense that they would check in on a Lamar Jackson. Uh, they gave up a lot. They gave up a whole lot to move up and draft Trey Lance. Uh, but just, I don't something has been off with their relationship with Trey Lance. I don't know what it is. And, and apparently they have been listening to calls about Trey Lance. Just, just listening. But again, if you're willing to listen, then you're willing to make a move. Because if, if you're willing to entertain something, then you, you, you're liable to make some action happen with that. But um, even with, 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 besides that, they lost Jimmy Garoppolo. He went to the Raiders, which I, I forget about a lot. Um, but with Brock Purdy, um, he had to have a, a significant surgery. And they're not 1,000% sure when he's going to be ready to return uh, and how quickly he'll be able to return. So why wouldn't they check in on a Lamar Jackson? He's a top quarterback. He was... Uh, available and whatnot, why, why not explore the option? Now, how seriously they explored the Lamar Jackson, I'm not sure. But the fact that they did, again, that, that shows that there was some willingness there. Uh, but we don't know what the details were. We don't know if there was a contract offer. We don't know if they were trying to talk to the Ravens and be like, hey, we'll do a regular trade, not the non-exclusive. We just don't know because we didn't hear about that part. Um, but they did, they did check in on them and see. So let's hope that the Ravens uh, and Lamar Jackson can check in on each other and they can do what it takes to end all of this noise, to make all of this irrelevant, to make all of this talk about, oh, could Lamar end up there? Could he end up there? Could he end up there? To where they can dead all of that. And all you got to do is come up with a nice contract, that's good. Obviously, it's going to be good for both sides, and that will officially end all of that. So we don't have to worry about Lamar Jackson being out. I love y'all.